Making boring photos burst with life is our topic today on Luminar Coffee Break. Let's see what we can accomplish in 10 minutes or less, starting now. Hello, everyone. All right, um, so the topic is going to be how to take boring photos and just add some light to them. Now, it's going to be different for each photo, obviously, that we're dealing with. So let me just dive right into this one. <coughs> Excuse me. I've loved this photo. However, it just, ah, just, it's dull. All right. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to click on edit. And in fact, you know what? Let me show you before and after. So here's the original, the one I just showed you. But this is what we're going to turn it into. So this is what I envisioned when I took this photo in my backyard. Or actually at Lou's Garden. This is what I saw when I took it. And then, of course, we can get a little creative and we can do different things like this. The sky's the limit. All right. So let's just take this one and let's re, re uh, or make, edit it to just bring life to it. Now, there's a couple ways we can do this. First, I usually like starting like with an ANSI AI, but this is a raw file. So I'm going to show you two ways of doing this. Look, this automatically improves color, detail, tone, and depth of an image. Look at that. We can start there, or because it is a raw file, we get over here, we delete that edit we just did. Because it's a raw file, now I want to take advantage of some of the extra features raw has. So here, I'm just going to go through my camera profiles and just see which one, look at that. That just automatically improves it. I like this. I, I need to add a little more contrast. I remember photographing this um, in direct sunlight. So you, you see there's really not a whole lot of contrast. Let's dial back some of the highlights. That's good. And then, of course, we're going to enrich the tones. So we're going to make the blacks tone look a little bit richer. And then with the white tones, we could either bring it out like this to bring life to it, or we could darken it, the, the whites. I'm going to try to do like a happy medium right about there. All right, so far, before, look at that. J just, just that one simple uh, tool, we were able to bring a little bit more life into this photo. Now let's go back to an answer, enhance AI, um, accent AI right here. Yeah, I thought so. This, this, this is just going to add a little more to what we just did. All right. Now, <coughs> should be looking at this. What bothers me, you know, is just these imperfections. So let's take the erase tool. And I'm going to come in. And I'm just going to highlight some of these here. Click erase. Now, if I was spending more time alone on this project here, I would take a little more, I'd be a little more careful on my erase. But overall, that looks pretty good. All right. So the erase looks good. Again, constantly go back and forth. Before and after. Look at that. So I like how this here is drawing my eye to the ladybug. Uh, let's ch check out some structure. And see if now, now amount is going to increase the structure. Now that's the overall structure of the image. But what boost is going to do is going to take the fine details. Let's just go to an extreme. And it's going to enhance the finer details of the image. So a lot of times I like to do, you know, a small amount of a small percentage of amount, but then crank up the boost a bit. Just get that structured look. Yeah, I like that. All right, so that looks good. And a couple other things we're going to try. Um, from here, I do want to come into Super Sharpen. And I'll tell you why. I'm doing a universal one. This had a little, in my opinion, a little bit of motion blur on the, the ladybug. And, of course, uh, photographing this is such a low... Aperture, 
I am going to get a little camera shake, so I knew that. But by adding that, look what it just did. It tightened up the edges a little bit more for me. This is, again, entirely up to you. I like it. I could go back in with masking and just fine-tune effect. Let's do it. Let's erase some of the effect around here. That's it. I like where the rest of it is. All right? All right, good. So I like where I'm heading. Again, this is still a flat-looking image. So let's come down here to the Dodge and Burn tool. I want to add some light. I want to lighten. I'm going to take this at 100%. The amount 100%. And what I want to do is just come in here and just add broad strokes. Now, I'm at 100% only because I want to see what it's actually doing. That's a little too much. So let's erase that part. There we go. And I'm going to lighten it again. Good. Now that I did this, let me do a little in here. Let's dial it way back. There we go. Yeah, right about. Yeah, there. That looks pretty good. Good. See if I <coughs> if I started drawing at this percentage, like we'll come right in here. Notice you're really not noticing exactly what you're doing. So by keeping it 100 at 100%, now I'm able to see exactly if the effects that it's doing. And I'm only going to use a very small percentage for the amount. All right, I'm going to close it. Now when I reopen it again, it'll be set to the default. Because you remember over here in edits is where that first instance of dodge and burn is, along with the other enhancements I did. So I'm going to come back to dodge and burn. I'm going to darken this time. And this time, let's set it right in here. Let's see if this is going to make a little difference. And yeah, just a little bit. All right, like that. And we're set. All right, let's see. Beginning. And this is where we're at right now. Now, the background looks good, but you know what? Let's add some texture to it. So I just clicked on the plus icon, browsed my computer to find some textures, and the texture I came up with was this one right here from Fly Paper Texture. <coughs> Excuse me. Now I'm going to give it a moment, and I want to stretch it to fill the entire image. Now, if I do this, that's the texture you're seeing. So let's take it down to soft light. Oh, look what that does. Look at this. Before, after, look how it also cleans up some of the edges around the flower. And if I zoom in, look what it's giving me. It's going to give me a little painterly effect. There we go. All right, and we're almost done. So what do we just do here? I'm leaving that layer on its own. I drop to the bottom layer. Let's just review real quick. All right, I started out with develop. Threw a little enhance in there. Got rid of the erase tool, and again, I can go back in here and adjust those later. Add a little super sharpen to get the ladybug Looking a little a little uh, more in focus. Did our dodge and burn. Now I'm going to finish it off one last, or actually two last tools. I'm going to increase Enhance AI, but I only want it to apply to the ladybug. So let's use a radial gradient. I just want to draw your eye right to that area here. Look at this. Four. After it was just that little light that's going to pop in there. And while we're there, to finish it off, 
let's see if the vignette tool is going to help us. Just by darkening some of the edges. Not too much. But just enough to where it's drawing more attention to the main focus, which, of course, is the ladybug. All right? All right, so let's check it out now. Here we are. We started with a dull, flat, boring image. And then within just a few moments, we, we brought the image back to life. Now, I can continue to work on this. You know, if the color is a little too vibrant, you know, we, we could bring down the saturation just a little bit and then up the, the, satur up the uh, vibrancy. <coughs> it's entirely up to you. The whole goal is to figure out when do I need to stop? Now, once I have it set, I'm going to export it. Where do I export it? Well, I'm going to put it back into the same folder that I that that I used, that I took it from, but I'm going to put it in underscore complete. And so by putting it in that folder there, now I know exactly where that image is. So when I go back to it, I can always check it out and either print it or... Uh, post it to my uh, slick pick portfolio or put it on social media. It's entirely up to you. And then let me pull it back up here. So again, I'll save it, which I already did earlier. So I'll just cancel this. And now I have all my, uh, all the techniques or all the edits I have are completed. And by the way, if I bring, yep, I did. So by bringing that photo, that image, or saving the image into my underscore complete because I have underscore garden where I got the image from. Now I'm going to be able to see it inside Luminar Neo and there's my final product. All right. So there we have it. Again, those are just a few ways. Just take a boring, <coughs> take a photo that doesn't have a lot of contrast or you felt it was a throwaway shot and then just bring more life to it. Try, try it on your own images. Start with either the Develop Raw or the Enhance AI, and then gradually start to work your way up through. And then the most important part is to figure out, <coughs> excuse me, is to figure out when to stop and complete your edit, export it to your folder inside the, 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 the subfolder, that you got the image from, underscore complete, and now you know exactly where all your edits are. All right? Well, guys, if you're here for on Zoom, please stick around for the Ask Me Anything segment. For everyone else, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you at the next Coffee Break.